Holy crap guys, I have not been back in a while and this review is going to be one of my favorite ones I do out of all the ones I've done so far. Again, I'm sorry that I have been gone. I was sick last weekend, I think it was. No, yes. Last weekend I was like super sick. I was like this. I could not speak. I lost my voice. I was coughing really bad. It was so bad, and I wanted to make a video so bad, but I, it, it, my voice was not good enough to do so, and that's why you're getting these video, this video, so late, because that's what happened, and that's just how it works, I guess. That's the only time I've ever lost my voice too. So I mean, <laughs> that's funny, huh? And it, let's get on to the review. So I just got Majora's Mask for the 3DS. Well, I didn't just get it; I got it back in February but this this has just proven that this is the best Zelda game so uh, as I said uh, the uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3 remake for the 3DS just came out and it's amazing and I played the original back in like 2013 I think I played the original on the Wii Virtual Console because you try to buy that thing on Amazon, it is hell expensive. So I was just like, nope, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. I know there'll be a remake, and Miyamoto did not disappoint because now there is a remake, and I am so happy. So basically, what the plot of the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is is you are Link, of course, and you're in the woods, search on Epona. And you're searching for Navi, who left after the end of Ocarina of Time. And basically what this game is, since it was made right after Ocarina of Time, back in like the 2000, it actually, the ending that you get on Ocarina of Time, the actual one that they show, not any of the separate universes or anything, the actual one they show where Link see, meets with Zelda at the very end, yeah, that's where this takes place. It takes place after that. And basically what happens is Link falls asleep, of course. He's always sleeping. And uh, a mysterious uh, imp called Skull Kid, that's what we're going to be calling him, comes and he basically ambushes Link um, and takes his ocarina and Pona, but Link holds on to Pona while uh, Skull Kid is running, uh, Skull Kid is riding, trying to ride away on her. So Skull Kid manages to, manages, sorry, to shake off Link off the horse, and Link pursues him into this tunnel where he falls down, uh, and Skull Kid turns Link into a Deku scrub. So that's a predicament, but uh, Link entering into this um, world ends up in a clock tower, and a mask salesman, which you'll recognize as the mask salesman from Ocarina of Time, shows up and he tells him, oh, you met with a terrible fate, haven't you? And he uh, tells him that if he can get them, uh, if he can get the mask back and return it to him, he will, uh, Link will, uh, sorry, Link, the uh, happy mask salesman will te teach Link a song that makes him not a Deku anymore. So, and all the while, when you're going to do this, there is a thing looming in the sky, it's a giant freaking moon, um, also known as one of the scariest things ever put in a kid's game. I, I literally don't know what they were thinking when they did that. <laughs> so being the Deku scrub and not really knowing much to do, you realize in this three day cycle that you're given, you're like, there's no way I can get this mask back. There's How am I supposed to do this? I'm a Deku scrub, how am I supposed to just get the mask back? And of course, that's one of the main problems you have. And when you meet the Skull Kid on top of the clock tower on the final day of the first cycle, mm -hmm, uh, you knock the, you get the ocarina back, the ocarina of time, to which you play the song of time. But the song of time isn't just a song that opens a door anymore. This thing, this actually does something <laughs> instead of ocarina of time. Seriously, the Ocarina of Time does more stuff with time in this game than it ever did in 
<laughs> on Ocarina of Time. Isn't that funny how that works? Anyway, so you travel back in time to the first day again. You confront the mask salesman, and he's like, oh, and he heals you with the song he gives you, and he's like, you didn't get the mask back, and then he just is like, okay, go get the mask now. You gotta do it, and that is where our adventure basically begins. So I, this is this is my favorite Zelda game. I'm gonna be honest with you right now. If you like Ocarina of Time, that's your opinion. But Majora's Mask is the best in my opinion, and I just think that it is um, the best because because of the three day cycle, because of the only four dungeons that you have with. The last one being one of the probably the best Zelda dungeon ever, and the focus on side quests. More side quests means more character development, so the NPCs don't just feel like things you're supposed to talk to to get stuff. They actually feel like real people, and it's just like, oh my gosh, I love this part. Of, I love the masks, all the powers you get from them, all the things you do with them, the transformation masks. I love it all. The Majora's Mask is so cool. And it's actually it was advanced for its time. It ran on the same engine that Ocarina of Time did, but it actually required the expansion pack because it was like so big, and they probably did more with the graphics and lighting and stuff. I'm sure. I I can't really tell the difference that much to be honest, but I'm sure they like did stuff. I think I heard they did the expansion pack because they wanted to do like the like little like darkness effect so it's not completely dark but like I think they wanted to do like fog effects and so I can't remember exactly but for the most part it actually looks really good and the 3DS version makes it look better than ever hey so in between cuts I realized that my light was not on so this probably looks like crap for the beginning of the episode but don't let that discourage you because now I have it on it's on for good anyway let's get back to the game I love the uh, game itself for really the graphics just improved on upon it so much and that's one of the main thing reasons you buy a remake like this and it uses the same engine as a uh, the Ocarina of Time 3DS remake did but it I feel it utilizes it better and like because I remember in the original uh, Woodfall Temple, which is like the Deku Temple, or whatever you want to call it. But I remember in the original, it they had the poison water, but it didn't really look that cool in the original, like NES one, in the dungeon. I mean, in the like main central area. But with the 3DS remake, they make it pop out so much more. Like the, it's all like pink and glowing. And it just looked way more menacing than before, and it's like, holy crap, it just it just looks so good. And I'm really glad they remade it for the 3DS. Not that they couldn't have made it for the Wii U and made it look freaking amazing, but I feel as though uh, I wanted the th remake so bad, I didn't want to wait for it any longer. So I don't mind that they used the same engine for this game. Okay, now I'm going to get off the graphic side and go on to the gameplay. In case you don't know, I'm doing this not just for the 3DS remake, but for the original too. I'm going to judge it on both of them. But on the gameplay aspect, it is a lot better. Uh, except for one part, which I will mention in a second. But first I want to mention how I love that the forward song of time doesn't just go half a day now. But you can do any time of hour of the day that you want. It makes it so much easier. It's like when they put the swift sail in Wind Waker, the Wind Waker remake, so you could, it would just change the wind along with you, where where you were going, and it makes it so much easier. And that's what they did kind of with the Song of Double Time, and that's one of the things I like. Uh, there's a new fishing system. I haven't tried it out yet. I beat the game. I just haven't tried it out yet. I don't think I will, mostly because... The fishing and stuff, I just, it wasn't a thing I liked in Ocarina of Time. It was just the thing I did to get the piece of heart. And unless I really want to 100% complete this, I'm not really going to go back to do any fishing. But the one thing I don't like that they did gameplay-wise was the Zora. 
mask powers. The swimming powers, I should say. Um, so basically, in case you don't know, in the original, you would swim really fast as a Zora, and whenever, as Zora Link, I should say, and whenever you got to something and you need to damage it, you would just, oh, one second, you would just, uh, press the, uh, press another button, and it would activate the magic power to do the power, but, to do the attack power, I should say, but what makes me mad is Nintendo decided to, uh, to, in order to go fast swimming, you have to sub, uh, use your magic while you're fast swimming too. You can't just press the button to, but I think the only, well, no, never mind. I was thinking, oh, because the button restrictions, but then I was like, no, because the Nintendo 64 controller only had the two buttons on the sides too, so they have no excuse there. So why the heck did they have to do that then? Why couldn't it just be the original? I don't know why they decided to do that. Anyway, it's not a really big deal. It's just if you didn't like the beaver bottle and piece of heart mini quest, side quest, uh, in the last game, like I didn't, then you're going to uh, despise it in this one. It was easy for me. I don't know why. It just was. But if you have not played the beaver mini game before you're going to get your butt kicked a lot on it just warning heads up on that surprised me is the first two main boss battles and the first two dungeons were uh, more or less the same as in the original but it surprised me when the georg fight i don't know if that's how you say it and the twin mold fight were way different from the original like the georg is the big fish but and but it actually made the bat boss battle much easier, in my opinion, and I like that they changed the boss battle for him. But I didn't like that they changed the boss battle for Twin Mold, though. I remember, I think you got the Giant's Mask, either you got the Giant's Mask right before the battle started, or you got it right in the, in the Stone Tower Temple. I can't remember exactly, but... In this one, you have to kill the first twin, the first um, giant flying worm with your arrows, which isn't too hard, and then you kill it, of course. It's not the hardest thing in the world. But then when you get the giant's mask, you can't, like, do the thing where you had your sword big and everything, and you could hit it with your sword, which made me mad. Uh, not because of the reasons you would think. It didn't make me mad that I couldn't use my sword. It was actually fun to actually beat the crap out of uh, the other worm and then just be able to wham like slam it down that's awesome but the problem was it takes so long to beat twin mold now and it was like so short before but now it just takes a long time because uh, twin mold for the most part you're gonna end up not being able to you have to swing it and hit it down four times and you, it literally takes like a billion punches before you actually get it down. And it's just so annoying. And it, it, that's like, that was my least favorite boss battle when it was my favorite in the original, which is kind of sad. But in the, in the end, it was, that was like my only gripe with the boss battles. And other than that, it's still, they're still all really fun to play. Not easy, but fun. One more thing I wanted to talk about, uh... Referring to uh, the mask is, in case you didn't know, I probably already mentioned it like ten times already, but there are three different masks that let you transform into a Goron, a Zora, and a Deku Scrub in, all throughout the game. And the, and they all have their unique abilities, and they're pretty cool masks for the most part. They are, ne neither one has an advantage over the other, which is the cool thing about it, and I li that's what I, one thing I like about it the most. And, just saying, there might be special other transformation mask waiting for you if you get all the masks in the game at the end. Just saying, you might want to take the notes down on that. Now, when it comes to characters in this game, Link is, of course, as mute as ever. And he expresses his expresses, expresses himself through not through his words, because he can't talk, but through his actions. And... That's where these side quests come into play because the side quests are the main focus of this game. As much as that sounds bad, 
It is probably actually one of the reasons that Majora's Mask is my favorite Zelda because it focuses on the side quests. Because every side quest has NPC and it's every single one is either sad or very awesome in some way. And every NP and the it love it because the NPCs do not feel like NPCs. They feel like they're actual people that you need to take care of or else and the moon's gonna crush them and you're like no they can't die they can't die and it's just it's so awesome and the side quests are definitely my favorite part of this game two specific side quests that I'm not going to spoil actually what happens in them but I'm just gonna mention uh, who they involve uh, one I'm pretty sure almost everyone on the internet knows about which is the Anju and Cafe side quest and the other being the Romani Ranch side quest, which, which actually involves two parts. And it's probably one of the best parts of the game, in my opinion. Just saying. Also, uh, unless, like, you're not going to be able to figure it out unless you play the game. Or you watch, you know, a video on YouTube. Freaking cheaters. But, uh, in the end, the side quests are one of the most important parts, and... Because these two side quests are my favorite, uh, when you get to the last cycle of the game where you're going, by the end of it, you're going to go to start the final sequence and uh, fight the final boss, I always make it a point, and the two playthroughs I've done of this game, uh, to do the Anju Cafe side quest and the Romani Ranch side quest, and defeat all four bosses all within the three day cycle and then in the game because I want to feel like I accomplished that in the end and like no and nothing bad happened to them and that is one of the main reasons that those two side quests are my favorite and The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is not only one of the best video games ever made it's also my it's also the best Zelda game in my opinion and even though it didn't grow up with it, I grew. I was a PlayStation child. I grew up with the original PlayStation. It was awesome. Anyway, uh, I didn't grow up with Zelda. I, I think my brother, my older brother, had a Game Boy Advance, and I played, I think it was Link to the Past on there. And that's the only taste of Zelda I got until really recently, like 20... 11 2012 recent in which I beat Ocarina of Time for the first time and that, and yeah it's pretty recent for me at least and that it and Majora's Mask I will cherish it forever even though I didn't grow up with it it's one of my favorite games of all time I'm gonna cherish it um, as long as I live and guys this is why Majora's Mask and Majora's Mask the remake for the 3DS gets a 10 out of 10 it is definitely a great game. Pick it up wh however you can. If you want to play the original, play the original. If you want to play the remake, play the remake. They both have their pros and cons to them. But um, th th in the end, it's just an amazing game. It's not flawless by any means. No game is flawless. But it's just an amazing game. And guys, I just want to thank you for watching. And I, If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, guys, don't forget to be a nerd. Peace.